Apostle Joshua Selman is a minister of the gospel and the president of Eternity Network International, an interdenominational Christian organization based in Abuja, Nigeria. He started preaching the gospel at a young age with the God-given mandate to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit through signs and wonders. He is the host of Koinonia, a weekly program under the umbrella of Eternity Network International, where people from all over the world come to experience worship, word, miracles, and the love of God. Known for his deep love for people and the body of Christ, Apostle Selman is committed to bringing many to the reality of a deep relationship with the Holy Spirit and inspire a generation to love and seek Christ. Today, he has become one of the leading voices stirring a reawakening to the true purpose of the Kingdom of God. IPG 2023, all the way from Abuja, Nigeria, please welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. For this grace that is provided one more time um, and I know that God will do us good in the name of Jesus please help me honor for one last time the bishop and his dear wife Bishop Asare God bless you thank you sincerely thank you for this great opportunity and then um, the presiding bishop alongside all the men and women of God who have come please help me one more time give them a big God bless you, it's an honor. God bless you, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. There were many people who were close to Jesus. Some tried to make money from their closeness to him. Others contended for transformation. Others were careless about that proximity. Many people came around Jesus. Others met him once and their lives changed. For instance, the woman with the issue of blood. There were others who at his were at his meeting severally, but they were not as they were not transformed. The scribes, the Pharisees. There were a few people who were encountered once, and they were not only changed, they became preachers. The madman at gathering, the woman at the well. Tonight, Jesus wants to reveal himself to us. But you can choose what you want to make out of that encounter. For others, it is a desperation for transformation. For others, it is to encounter his power to meet your needs. For others, it is to grant spiritual intelligence and to reposition us for God's prophetic program. And I hope and pray that we do not have people here tonight that will be careless about his presence. Jacob in chapter 28 was careless about that encounter and when he awoke from his sleep he slept in a place called Luz on a stone and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens and the earth with angels ascending and descending and in spite of all that happened he was not changed when he woke up he said surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not what would follow Jacob was over 20 years of tragedy in the house of Laban by the time we get to chapter 32 another chance was to be given to him the Bible says he dismissed all his wives he dismissed his cattle when he was alone then a man came and he said no this time around I will not let you go he said leave me for the day breaketh he says I will not let you go unless you bless me and he says what is your name he says Jacob he said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. He touched the hollow of his thigh and he blessed him. And the Bible says, the sun arose and he called that place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. I don't know which of the encounters will be your interest tonight. 
chapter 28 can be an encounter for you if you are not sensitive that leaves you in pain and regret chapter 32 of Genesis can be your encounter tonight where Saul becomes Paul where Cephas becomes Peter where ordinary men encounter superior dimensions of grace in one minute can we cry our hearts to the Lord and ask him for a visitation I saw several people outside make sure you are connecting by faith and for those connecting from across the globe online there are no spectators in his presence everyone is able to receive go ahead and pray Someone pray because your ministry is about to shift. Someone pray because your life and your destiny is about to change. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Says we all with faces unveiled, beholding him as in a mirror. We are changed from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of God. Jesus, matchless name, we pray. Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne, we hail you most high. Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne, vision please listen and in that vision I saw a donkey that has been tied and the scripture that came to me was when Jesus was about to have a triumphant entry he says go to the street where the rivers divide or where the roads divide and there you will see a colt that no man had ridden on that colt is a strategy that colt is a mystery there are many 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 people who will have the privilege to ride on colts that no man has ridden upon because there is a triumphant entry let me explain to you what that means that colt does not have to be a physical donkey for you it is a dimension of grace that will give you a leverage that many of you will begin to operate in dimensions that hitherto have been foreign and strange to you perhaps you have only seen them in visions and dreams it says lose it and when they ask you say the master have need of it it is because when a season where God has need of men there is a program 
there is a program that God desires to happen in Takoradi, in Ghana, in Africa, that continent that is spearheading the final revival before the coming of Christ. It is true. Hallelujah. And when I saw that, I understood what that meant. That someone who was on his way coming for this meeting did not even know that he was coming to collide with prophecy that the things you have seen the things that have been told you perhaps are about to find expression in Luke chapter 4 the Bible says that he stood up for to read and the scroll of Isaiah was given to him and there he read the messianic prophecy Isaiah 61 when he was done the Bible says he closed it and kept it and their eyes were fastened on him and he said this today is this scripture fulfilled when Isaiah was writing, he had no idea who he was writing about. But Jesus now came to embody that prophecy. There are many of you, when certain prophets prophesied over Ghana, they didn't even know it was you they were talking about. You will become an embodiment of ancient prophecies. Some of those prophets are not even alive, but they left a prophecy that a time will come. There will be a move of the Spirit across your nation, across your region, it is time for certain prophecies to be made manifest and someone God brought you here and picked you here because it is time for your life carry so time for your ministry to become an embodiment of prophecy if you believe that say amen therefore I beseech you that within the next few minutes we'll be spending in the word before we pray Please let your heart and your spirit like Bishop admonished us be opened. When God comes, there are no executives in his presence. Everybody trembles before the king. And do not make the mistake of Martha. Martha was worried about many things, mundane things. And she was offended that Mary was not assisting her. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and offended about many things. But one thing is needful, he said. And that is what Mary has chosen, to sit at the master's feet. When it was time to serve them bread, he said, let all of them sit down. If you cannot sit down, there is no bread for you. You have to sit down and leave all the... I know you need money. I know you need your bills paid. But now in his presence, that superior investment of giving him your dedicated attention is the key that will bring rest to you roundabout. Are we in agreement? Please be seated. God bless you and good evening, everybody. My spirit is fired up tonight. And I believe that God is going to do us good in the name of Jesus Christ. Two scriptures, then a final charge, then we pray. Two scriptures, then a final charge, and then we pray. Scripture number one, Romans 5, 17. Please let me encourage as many who have not been able to listen to the teachings from yesterday empowered by light, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you do well to lay your hands on those materials. Use it as a retreat resource. And for those of us who could not make it this morning, please, you would want to listen to what the Lord brought for us this morning. The purpose of the word of God is to bring enlightenment. Remember yesterday, Galatians 2.2, 2, I went up by revelation. It takes more than desire to accent realms. I went up by revelation. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amplified says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, Rise to a new light. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's do Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Paul is speaking to the church in Rome. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, how much more they which receive abundance of grace, number one, and then the gift of righteousness shall reign. So he tells us here that dominion is predicated upon these realities. Number one, 
that you receive the gift of righteousness through Christ. And the Bible tells us how men receive the gift of righteousness and how they become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That it is only in and through Jesus, the new and living way, that men become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth upon the tree, that the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, might come upon we the Gentiles to the end that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So this is what the Bible teaches. That our being called the righteousness of God ushers us to now access the life of God, this Holy Spirit. And the Bible said many things about the Holy Spirit. Among them he said, I have many things to tell you now, but ye cannot bear them. He said, how be it? When he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Hallelujah. He says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into the comprehension of man, that which God has in store for them that love him. He says, but, but, there is an exception. Hallelujah. That the Holy Spirit has revealed these things to us because he sustains the ability to search even the deep things of God. So the Bible says, if by any chance, you access the righteousness that is in Christ Jesus and that comes as a result of declaring his lordship in your life. Peter was speaking on the day of Pentecost and he rounded up his sermon by saying, let it be known unto you that this same Jesus whom you have crucified have today been exalted as Lord and Christ. The Bible says when they heard, they were caught to the heart and they said, men and brethren, what do we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins are we together? So you repent for the remission of your sins. You confess his lordship according to Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10 says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we believe that report to become the righteousness of God. Being the righteousness of God is not imparted as a spiritual gift necessarily. It is a product of your believing and declaring the Lordship of Jesus over your life. Are we still together? Then he says when you obtain that righteousness, the next requirement is called the abundance of grace. That if you want to reign in life by Christ, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus through the new birth, then your next port of call becomes obtaining grace in abundance. Are we together? And Apostle Peter was teaching us how grace operates in the life of the believer. He says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Are we Bible students? Through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. He says, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So we understand from scripture that grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. You don't look for grace by looking for grace. You look for grace by searching for light. Are we together? That when you obtain light, and I told you that light in the spirit represents three things. One, knowledge. Two, manifestation. Three, glory. Everything that makes manifest, the Bible says, is light. Are we still together? When you obtain the gift of righteousness and then the abundance of grace, the abundance of grace means the abundance of revelation because the kind, the quality and the dimension of grace that you carry upon your life is directly proportional to the level of light that you have access to. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Yes. Jesus one who was anointed without measure was one who was knowledgeable without measure. He contended for truth. From age 12, he was at the temple learning. 
learning and for the next 18 years of his life he submitted himself to knowledge by the time jesus shows up to begin his ministry he's 30 and every confrontation that came he said it is written from the residue of his knowledge no wonder john said he was full of grace and truth hallelujah are we together so it's important for us to know that if we are to walk in dominion we will need the abundance of grace that means as you have submitted yourself through all of these days learning light after light what you are actually accessing is the great components the empowerment hallelujah you will turn back and find out that the level you were spiritually before this conference begun, you can't find it again because you would have evolved like an insect evolves from egg, larva, pupa, adult. You would have accessed certain possibilities that were not in your life. Hallelujah. Second scripture. 1 Timothy 4 and verse 15, 15 and 16. Paul was mentoring his son in the gospel, Timothy. And he had a very instructive admonition. May I request that we please read together if you can see it. Ready? Read. Meditate upon these things. Uh -huh. Give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all. Let's do 15 again. One to read please. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all let me read verse 16 now it says take heed unto thyself and unto doctrine continue in them for in doing this thou shalt save both thyself and all them that hear thee hallelujah so he's admonishing Timothy and he says meditate on these things what things the body of knowledge that I've brought to you meditate on these things he calls them marvelous light a body of spiritual knowledge that is able to empower a believer he says meditate on these things then the instruction is give yourself wholly not doubting not half-heartedly give yourself wholly to them give yourself wholly to the revelations the lights that you have received all that you have been taught immerse yourself in them and it leaves you with an assurance that your profiting will appear the product of that light and the grace that has come from that light will compel the dexterity the excellence the beauty the glory that emanates from your life it says it shall appear unto all that sounds like Matthew 5 and verse 16. Let your light so shine before men, it says, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. So I want to give you a final charge and we'll pray. Tonight is a miracle and impartation service. But I just thought to give this final charge. So he says, give yourself wholly to them. Now, please look up. Like you have learned in subsequent sessions, the pathway for growth, for stature and maturity for the believer is not a guesswork. There is already a predefined path for every believer in Christ to follow that naturally, even though supernaturally, leads you to maturity and stature. Hallelujah. So, here is a student about with the desire to be a medical doctor, say. And that student has been offered admission in a prestigious institution in Ghana. Did you know that the lecturers at the university system is not scratching their head, wondering what to teach the gentleman? From beginning, there is already a predefined pathway. Am I right? That gentleman is led through strategic mentorship, courtesy the lecturers, and then the wisdom that has been designed within the system and his assignment is to submit methodically from 100 level 200 level and it continues until he gets to medical school and after six years all things being equal that once naive student suddenly his name and his status is upgraded in one day and he's now called doctor 
the same hospital that would have driven him away six years ago now receives him and he's qualified to now begin to operate a few people let him continue with that diligence and after 10 20 years the one's naive student is now called a consultant perhaps a professor of medicine and he becomes one of the rare authorities globally speaking that when there are delicate surgeries to happen regardless where he is on earth he can be consulted what do we do about this what changed it may not be his size what changed it may not be his voice he passed through a methodical system versus someone who just believes he has the talent to cure sick people when your relative is really sick you don't go there are we together because you are looking for someone whose understanding has been constructive most believers do not attain maturity because we largely freelance the knowledge that we want so we handpick little of prayer here little of fasting here little of revelation here little of giving here and we have true but inaccurate and many times disjointed imbalanced revelations and they form a portrait of a believer that is not a beauty to behold this is the tragedy with many believers so we know something small about prayer we know something small about fasting we know something small about scripture we know something small about ministry and with the limited revelations for many of us we put it together and it becomes the ladder upon which we stand only that you find out that everything is shaking and then the sad thing is we invite others to climb the ladder with us in that confusion and inaccuracy and sometimes it breaks crumbling everyone down Jeremiah 6 16 the Bible says Jeremiah 6 16 first saith the Lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths wherein is a good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls it says but they said we will not walk therein this message is for everybody but particularly and with all due respect I honor every man and woman of God here represented but let me give one charge very quickly and then we'll talk to everybody Jeremiah 3 15 says and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to mine heart that will feed you with knowledge and with understanding the spiritual maturity in any territory is mercilessly a reflection of the kind and the quality of spiritual voices within that territory this is true so if takoradi has powerful people spiritually speaking the credit goes to god but it also goes to the kind and the quality of spiritual voices that feed the individuals you can literally assess the quality of the voices within a territory by random sampling believers and testing their understanding with respect to doctrine hallelujah the word doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means it is a set of beliefs that turns a disciple to be as dexterous as his master so for most believers my charge here is that beyond the desire for power beyond the desire for the miraculous beyond the desire for the prophetic as important as these components are it is important for us to study the apostolic template that was given to the church that translates any believer to become a person of stature and maturity the destiny of all believers as commissioned by God is not supposed to leave people as weak members in the presence of one mighty man of God the idea is to turn ordinary men like the men of David who came weak in debt and distress and that happens through the factors that I'm going to be showing you that you can submit a believer to a certain template and you can guarantee by the authority of scripture that two three four five years under your local assembly that believer should become a person of stature the great commission has three components to it number one is called world evangelization number two is called transformation discipleship 
and the tool for discipleship is called doctrine there are seven foundational doctrines six really according to hebrews chapter 6 i showed us yesterday that it becomes the foundational template for the maturity of the disciples and then the last dimension is called territorial or societal transformation the great commission was designed to capture these three dimensions world evangelization turning sinners to become the righteousness of god discipleship maturing the now saved people and helping them to conform experientially to the image and the character of the christ exposing them to the modus operandi of the kingdom and helping them through knowledge to become sons indeed and now those who are transformed and empowered to discipleship are released to become agents of national transformation the bible simply calls them witnesses hallelujah i'm saying this because by the privilege of god's grace and with all humility i'm a student of revival i have studied the moves of god across several of the continents that we have i've had the honor to meet a few people that were mightily used by god some in their lifetime many have now joined the cloud of witnesses and I can tell you that there are certain missing ingredients as far as the pathway to mentoring and maturing believers are concerned. It is the reason why we have a lot of churches in Africa, respectfully speaking. But the kind and the quality of believers that emanate from our churches may need us to respectfully reconsider our approach as far as the maturity of believers are concerned. Are we together? So let me present to you the apostolic model for the maturity and the dexterity, the growth of the saints. Acts chapter 2, please. Give us from verse 42. We'll read 42 to 47. Is God helping someone already? This is a final charge tonight. The Bible says, and they, the they, they mean, meaning the early church, the body of believers, the 3,000 that were saved on the day of Pentecost, together with all the other believers who were saved through them, and they continued steadfastly in number one, the apostles' doctrine, and in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers, 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Next verse, please. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. We're reading to 47. They sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Next verse, please. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and in breaking of bread from house to house. It did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. 47. Praising God and having favor with how many people? All people. Let's read the last sentence. And the Lord added to the church daily as should be saved. So there is a template that Jesus left with the apostles. That every time you want to mature and build believers, you submit them to a spiritual system. And that system was again given detail in Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 when there was a problem with the welfare department and about serving meals and tables and they called on the apostles to come and attend to that matter he said no search for yourself seven men full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom to deal with the matter of tables he said but we verse 4 will give ourselves continually so this was the secret that Jesus left with his disciples who later became apostles, we will give ourselves continually to number one, prayer. Number two, the ministry of the word. Number one, prayer. Number two, the ministry of the word. Let's discuss this very briefly and then we will pray. Many believers desire growth. Many des believers desire to manifest the glory and the grace of God. The theme of your conference talks about empowerment. 
and empowerment is beyond just laying hands is beyond just falling down is beyond just rolling from left to right empowerment is the resultant effect of your the upgrade in your understanding access to light that translates to dominion and there are certain secrets the bible has revealed the first apostolic model that was given to the disciples please listen was to create i call it a systemic consistent prayer life please write it down any believer who desires to grow must have a systemic consistent prayer life i know we pray but for most believers our prayer life is a matter of emergency just responding to current needs not as a, a template that leads to growth and stature hallelujah praise the name of the lord a systemic consistent prayer life in luke chapter 18 the bible says jesus spake a parable unto them verse 1 to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint provided you are a man the bible mandates that you must pray otherwise you will faint you will be weak and you will be weary first thessalonians 5 17 it says pray without ceasing it doesn't just mean pray from morning till night it means be consistent james chapter 5 and verse 13 it says is any man afflicted let him pray so prayer is also a recommendation to manage afflictions of any and all kind the bible then says the fervent and effectual prayer the righteous availed much it says elijah was a man of like passion as we are hallelujah and that he prayed earnestly that there be no rain for a span of three and a half years and then elijah now prayed again prayer sustains the ability to close and to open heavens and climate even over territories the one thing that satan fought in the life of daniel who although was a politician but he doubled as a prophet are we together now was his prayer life to the point that satan influenced a parliament to pass a decree that for 30 days nobody should pray by any other god prayer when done properly with understanding is powerful prayer is not just chanting and reciting emotions to the heavens that's not prayer <clears throat> let me tell you what makes prayer powerful the word compliancy of your prayer is what makes it fervent and effectual it is not just the energy that is dissipated in the place of prayer if your prayer is not word compliant it is called praying amiss praying amiss is praying out of the jurisdiction of prayer in fact apostle john says it this way and this is the confidence that we have that if we ask anything according to his will so the epicenter the focal point in the believer's prayer life is the will of god because the assignment of the power of god is to bring all things into the will of god the power of god is not designed to act against the will of god so when you are asking for anything outside the will of god the power of god cannot respond and attend to that prayer the assignment of the power of God, I repeat again, is to bring all things in conformity with the will of God. Are we together? Strategic prayer. Believers in Ghana, in Africa, if we must become that mighty army that Ezekiel 37 talks about, we must be men given to prayer. Prayer is not for prophets. Prayer is not just for apostles. Prayer is not just for those called in the fivefold ministry. It is mandatory that all believers be mentored to through discipline in partnership with the Holy Spirit to create an intelligent systemic approach to your prayer life why do you need to create a systemic approach because our activities differ our age ranges differ are we together a young man of say a teenage and early 20s may have a lot luxury of time 
and flexibility of so many things because he most likely is under the care of guidance or parents and so he can afford to stretch and do certain things but a man who is a leader a father of many children are we together attending to certain needs may not use the template of that young man so creating a systemic prayer life is not just an impartation from god it takes discipline and intelligence The strategy you used 10 years ago, you cannot use it now that God has made you an overseer. Your schedules are busy. You have a number of things to do. You have to redesign a prayer template that suits the reality of your life here and now. Most believers pray circumstantially. Most believers pray emotionally. When you read Acts chapter 3, the Bible talks of Peter and John that they went to pray at the hour of prayer. There was a time they dedicated to discipline called the hour of prayer. I'm doing a charge. I don't have the time. I would have shown you the four assignments of prayer as revealed in scripture. Can I give you in summary? The first assignment of prayer as revealed in scripture is for growth and transformation. This is the highest assignment of prayer. For most believers, prayer for us is simply a tool for warfare or to get petitions. That is powerful. But the greatest assignment of prayer is for the personal edification and the transformation of that believer. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. The Bible says, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering. The he being Jesus. As he prayed this is what happened to him the fashion of his countenance was altered transformation and his raiment became white and glistering so a weak version of you can pray like a snake molting out of its old self you can come out of your old weak and limited self into a more powerful and superior version of you show me a believer who is weak timid in ignorance bound by the yokes of the flesh submit that person through a methodical approach to prayer and i show you a man of power evolving my charge to you therefore respectfully speaking preachers pray businessmen pray politicians pray students pray husbands pray wives pray parents pray all men pray this is a, a it's an apostolic template for power he gave us a prayer language to the intent that we be edified first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 4 that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself edified himself Jude 1 and then verse 20 says but ye beloved building yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost submit yourself to prayer ladies and gentlemen submit yourself to prayer so number one the first assignment of prayer is for growth and transformation number two the second assignment of prayer is for obtaining requests and making petitions obtaining requests Prayer is the authorized platform as revealed by scripture, revealed by Jesus to obtain requests and to make petitions. He says, when ye pray, pray in this manner, our Father. Then he says, give us this day our daily bread. That means when you want to make petitions and obtain requests, it happens in the place of prayer. Mark eleven twenty four, and what things soever ye desire, it says, when ye pray, not if ye pray, desire must be connected to prayer for you to have a manifestation. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them, and it says, thou shall have them. You believe that? So we must obtain grace. One of the graces I'm praying that will rest on someone tonight is a genuine spirit of prayer and supplication. The ability to hold on to the horns of the altar and to pray until you evolve and to pray until certain petitions touch the heavens. Prayerlessness is pride. If you are prayerless, you are arrogant because it means you are declaring independence from the government of heaven. That every time you do not pray is a declaration of self-sufficiency outside of the assistance of heaven. 
the highest proof of humility as revealed in scripture is to be prayerful when you submit yourself to prayer it is proof that you are aware that i am incapacitated by myself assignment number three what is the third assignment of prayer are you ready for creation and spiritual legislation the bible says and doubt a thing and it shall be established unto you it says where the word of a king is there is power for creation and spiritual legislation what does that mean to pass decrees and program the spiritual climate over your life and over territories to conform to the will of god i prophesied as i was commanded and the bible says there was a sound there are men and women who if you understand this dimension of prayer right from where you are elijah did not go to a radio station right from where he was standing he passed a decree and the spiritual climate over the den world answered to one man he was not the only righteous man i'm sure other people tried to pray but he shut the heaven and went to sit down when it was time he prayed again seven times and by the seventh time he saw what looked like the fist of a man's hand he said it has come let's run you can create possibilities when you are a man of prayer the bible says to appoint unto them that morning zion you know what that means to program a climate of possibilities over men that somebody who has no business being favored because he came under your influence you can stand and say this day you are not just giving a word of knowledge you are using the creative dimension of the prophetic when the prophet said by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened it was his word that created that possibility When we know how to create possibilities, you become a blessing. So you can stand and tell somebody, God bless you. This God bless you that we say that has no power is supposed to contain so much power that when someone comes to shake you and you say, God bless you, the person laughs except that two meters after leaving you, someone says, I don't know you, but I was told to give you this. And he remembers that someone who is a man of prayer said, God bless you. The fourth assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is for warfare and prophetic intercession. Warfare and prophetic intercession. Warfare and prophetic intercession. It was Apostle Paul, like I taught us in the morning, who arranged the satanic keda and said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. It was him that arranges and he said that we be not ignorant of the devil's devices. Did the Bible not say no weapon fashioned? So demonic weapons are fashioned. You know what it means to fashion a weapon you have to observe what it will be used for first before you build it so when the devil fashions weapons he first studies the believer he will use that weapon against the loophole in your spiritual life becomes his creativity for building that weapon men must understand how to pray and intercede Ghana must have another dimension of prophetic intercessors with intelligence who can stay the hand of darkness and define the boundaries of Ghana spiritually and say darkness thus far have you come no further shall you come go the bible says and i sought for a man who will stand in the edge so that i will not destroy them but i found none i believe that there are people who have come tonight that after this conference the mantle of a prophetic intercessor in a way that you have never seen there are Anna the prophetesses there are elijah's men and women who will access superior dimensions of grace that you will hold on to the horns of the altar you will pray revival you will stir the power of darkness over men and over churches can i tell you the greatest way to be a partner with any vision is to be a man of prayer in fact the formation of the end time army is threefold the first fold is prophetic intercessors the second are the apostolic and prophetic community that are now sent into the cosmos and then the third are the kingdom financiers this is the tripartite formation no army will lose with that formation 
prophetic intercessors the apostolic and prophetic communities that are sent to the seven mountains and then the apostolic financiers men and women anointed to make those mandates possible is someone learning now we are still discussing prayer you must obtain grace from God please hear me if your prayer life has gone down I announce to you respectfully speaking that you are really under attack and don't keep quiet when it is time to pray shake it off no excuses you must tell yourself no way prayerlessness must be out of my life I obtain grace stamina stature in the spirit to pray and to pray until you birth revival to pray until certain mantles are smeared upon your life are we learning now you must obtain grace to pray pastors let us teach our people to pray and to pray with understanding I repeat one more time the word compliancy of your prayer is what makes it fervent and effectual no matter the kind of energy that is dissipated in the place of prayer as well intentioned as that is if your prayer is not word compliant what does that mean that you are praying according to the will of God so the Bible says watch and pray there is intelligence that must be deployed watching uses the mind uses your eyes you need need light to pray effectively hallelujah the disciples were not prayerless they said teach us to pray the issue was not prayerlessness the issue was that their prayer was not producing results and they said we noticed something about your prayer Jesus everything you said come to came to pass teach us what is the formula and Jesus began to teach them what we know to be our Lord's prayer and there's no time to discuss that but that you see in matthew now matthew chapter 5 6 he was a, a template that he was given our father he said pray in this manner our father that means you must approach god as abba pata father father means source sustainer defender you do not have plan b and come to god when you come to god you must come understanding hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh unto god must come believing that he is he exists and that is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him that is the implication of our father who art in heaven meaning your prayer would demand faith because it's in a dimension that is not earthly then he says hallowed be your name that you must approach him with the spirit of reverence knowing that although he's your father he is God to hallow his name means to know that his power is captured in all of his names God hides his power in his names then he says thy kingdom come in order of priority your petition should be your kingdom come because the reason why you are even asking for bread is because the kingdom has not fully come if the kingdom comes you would not need to say give us this day again because the culture of the kingdom mandates that it comes with all its supplies are we together now so while he's saying pray for your needs and everything he's saying the fact that you have to request those needs is a deficiency of something bigger that the culture of the kingdom is yet to be imported in its strength let's stop there number two let's talk of the ministry of the word but we will give ourselves continually to number one prayer number two the ministry of the word this is the second apostolic template that was given to the believers acts chapter 20 and verse 32 those outside if you're with me shout hallelujah may god bless you thank you for your attention acts 2 32 here's what the bible says and now brethren so he's talking to those who are of the fold he says i commend you it's a handover ceremony i commend you to god and to the word of his grace he says which is able to do what number one to build you up it is the word that builds men up not longevity in church necessarily it is the word and then counter with the world as the logos of God that builds you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified 
John chapter 1 from verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God verse 2 says the same was with God in the beginning verse 3 says all things were made by him and without him outside of the world was not anything made that was made give us Colossians 1 and verse 16 Colossians 1 and verse 16 it tells you the power of the word for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones dominion principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him hallelujah the word of god is very important and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation paul prayed from his heart over the church in ephesus in ephesians chapter 1 when we begin our reading from verse 16 that the eyes of the believers understanding be enlightened it was a prayer a passionate prayer for the church ephesians 1 from verse 16 that I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. Paul was prayerful. 17. It says that the God of our, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I like 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints 19 says and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe ladies and gentlemen please hear me i want you to get on a project to damage spiritual ignorance in your life make it a project learn doctrine stay with the word Hallelujah. When you know the word and you are sound in doctrine, it becomes the basis of your stability as a Christian. It is to this end that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers and pastors Ephesians chapter 4 says for the equipping the perfecting the maturing of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry it says until we all come into the fullness of the measure of the stature hallelujah of Christ not tossed to and fro by every wind of nor the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive the bible says the fivefold was designed it was a strategy god's own design to help the body of believers to become dexterous and mature learning doctrine my charge for everyone tonight is we must get to a point of nominal christianity that is bankrupt of light and understanding and begin to become students of scripture indeed not for the purpose of preaching but for the purpose of your life thank god for the prophetic thank god for prophecies thank god for impartations you are about to receive one shortly but can i tell you i told you yesterday it is written is greater than i saw it is written is greater than i heard mm -mm. it is written is what confirms i saw and i heard if i sleep and i wake up and i see myself in a coffin the first thing i'm going to do is i know the, the scriptures like arrows will build a system of defense around you and on the strength of that you can take care of that which you have seen the average believer does not know what to do with attacks from the enemy because we have not been so equipped this is why we keep burdening men of god you see young people looking old because everyone wants to meet them for prayer as much as wonderful as that is no man can survive that kind of pressure but when believers are shown the light with dexterity and power there is a dimension of upgrade and stature and power the more we teach God's people rights the more we enter our Sabbath even as servants of God the word of God ye 
err, not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. Ye err. The word of God is so powerful, God names himself the word, the logos of God. Can I challenge you? There are many of us that need to close the gaps in our spiritual understanding. That gap is too large. The devil will make a mockery of us and make a mockery of our bishopric. We must obtain grace from God to be men and women of sound understanding. And do not tell me you cannot rise to a level of commendable understanding. There's no time but make reference to this scripture. Luke chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4. Dr. Luke was speaking. And he was saying something profound to Theophilus. And he was saying, as much as I have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which were most surely believed among us. Verse 2, media has already tempted me. So let me fall into that temptation. It's a good one. Even as they delivered them unto us, which were from the beginning eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Verse 3, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus why read verse 4 together please one to read that thou mightest know the certainty of the things wherein thou hast been instructed so you don't just believe it because pastor said you now know the certainty of it so the day the man of God is not there with you, the word of God is still there with you. And you can say, Satan, my pastor may not be here. My prophet may not be here. Nothing wrong with us coming into your life. But in the name of Jesus, I have been well mentored. And I rebuke that spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ghana, Africa, there is a greater call for us to balance the prophetic and the apostolic advantage we have with the soundness of doctrine. The missing link in the kind of things that we are doing, and this is generally and respectfully speaking, it's been a long-term challenge, especially with ministry in Africa. There is a greater call for a restoration of the dexterity of doctrine in addition to the gifts of the Spirit. The gift of the Spirit alone is like standing on one foot. You can't stand for too long. Doctrine is what gives you balance so that no matter where you are swayed left and right, you see, the challenge with many people, respectfully speaking, even the West, they have become people of supposed doctrine, but they have denied the power of God. So it's still standing on one foot. God is giving us the strategy for the end time. The gifts of the Spirit in all its entirety, including the prophetic, the miraculous, but it is balanced with sound doctrine. This is what builds any believer. Are we together? Miracles and signs and wonders can draw the people to Jesus. It is discipleship through the methodical communication of doctrine that raises those people and matures them. A miracle can happen overnight, but transformation does not happen overnight. It is line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Are we learning now? So ladies and gentlemen, we're about to celebrate the hand of God in a fresh dimension. But I needed to say this. Lest you be carried away by the manifestations and the miracles and forget that that which truly builds the saints is when they submit themselves to this apostolic model of prayer in all its dimensions and the ministry of the word. Then other supporting structures like your diligence in coming to the house of God. I told you that there is something about the regular convergence of believers in every city and in every territory God so ordained that there must be local assemblies and apostolic and prophetic platforms that allows for the regular convergence of believers for the purpose of discipleship mentorship and maturity any territory that lacks local assemblies or apostolic and prophetic platforms intended to build and mature the believers cannot have matured believers within that territory when i started yesterday i told you that we're gathered in this conference for four reasons at least four number one that this is a platform for encounters number two that this is a platform for transformation like you have received 
but number three i told you that in every prophetic gathering like this there must be an opportunity for god to reach down to his people and to bring them miracles signs and wonders the gospel is not complete until there is a manifestation of the miraculous romans 15 19 i believe it is please give it to us let me be sure that that is the scripture it just came to my spirit let's read together if you're a christian ready one to read through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the spirit of god so that from jerusalem and round about Illyricum, i have fully preached the gospel what made the gospel complete the message and the power the message and the power the message alone is not the complete gospel ladies and gentlemen it is the message and the power romans acts chapter 8 i meant to say acts 8 and verse 5 the bible says philip went down to samaria and he preached christ unto them verse 6 says and they gave the people gave heed with one accord hearing and seeing the miracles which he did what were the miracles verse 7 it says for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many that were taken with palsies and that they were lame were healed as a result verse 8 there was great joy in Takoradi great joy great joy so we have come tonight very touched and humbled by your commitment i know that many of you have come here desiring god to visit you listen to me this god that we serve is the all-powerful god he says i have spoken once and twice have you heard that power belongeth to god ladies and gentlemen let your faith be stretched from border to border because god wants to visit you now now is the moment where god begins to rewrite the stories of men's destinies now is the moment where age-long captivities yokes and curses that have tied men tied families tied visions is about to give way because the bible says now the lord is that spirit it says and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty upon mount zion it says there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession the bible says when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream our mouths were filled with laughter and they said among the hidden the lord had done great things for us it says the lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity it says like the streams of the negev ladies and gentlemen god is about to visit us as the mighty one the mighty terrible one and if you are ready an expectant can you jump up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit a prayer of desperation and expectation someone is praying someone is praying by the power of the holy spirit someone is praying outside make sure you pray Pray! Your ministry is about to be shifted. You are entering the apostolic and prophetic era of your ministry. Something is about to descend from heaven and rest upon your life. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he.
the Sadducee who comes in the name of our God. The Sadducee who comes in the name of our God. The Sadducee who comes in the name of our God. The Sadducee who comes in the name of our God. The Sadducee who comes in the name of our God. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen. I want to pray for you now. There is a fire of God that is able to bring deliverance unto men. Let me explain to you what deliverance is from scripture. Deliverance is not warring and fighting with demon spirits. That is ignorance. Deliverance is the systemic art of establishing the victory of Christ in experience over the life of believers or unbelievers who have been plagued and victimized by Satan and his cohorts. And there are three levels to biblical deliverance. The first is casting out the spirit influences that are influencing the believers or possessing the unbelievers. The second dimension of deliverance is deliverance through the word, the methodical teaching of the word that brings transformation. The third and final aspect that seals deliverance is called the discipline of conformity, where the believer will take responsibility and walk in keeping with the truths that have been allotted for your victory. Are we together? So when we pray and rebuke spirits, we do that number one, because the Bible says, say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Psalm 66 verse 3. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. There are three access points, only three from scripture, wherein Satan and all demon spirits oppress all men, including the saints. All the attacks and the yokes of darkness over men on earth are only through three avenues. Number one, covenants number two ignorance number three disobedience these are the only platforms upon which satan plagues believers the highest of the three is covenants because it has a transgenerational implication so you do not have to be an active participant of what makes you a victim this is where the realities of bloodlines and yokes and all these kinds of satanic hindrances come. But the Bible says they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. Hallelujah. I'm saying this so that you will open your heart to receive. There are many people who have come here gathered tonight and all kinds of satanic spirits. How do you know that Satan is attempting to possess, influence, or manipulate your life? The Bible tells us when there is stealing, when there is killing, when there is destruction, that the thief cometh not but for to steal. And it, Mount Zion is the authorized place for deliverance. It says upon Mount Zion, not outside Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, then holiness, then the sons of Jacob, will possess their possessions now here's what i'm going to pray and please whether you are an usher or not i can imagine that the ushers will be limited when someone is under the anointing and i ask you to bring them out please do well to cooperate just bring them out whether you're an usher or not do well to help them if i do ask that you bring them there's a reason why i ask them to bring them to the front hallelujah i want to pray for you and then we'll minister to the sick and then we'll watch god begin to turn your life around that in a moment in the twinkling of an eye the bible says we will be changed something in your life there are chains that will be loose right now there are people who have been tied down by yokes nobody rising from your family nobody excelling women becoming the men in that family whereas the men are subjugated in shame now thanks be to god he says which always causes us to triumph hallelujah praise the name of the lord now you're going to shout the name jesus i will instruct that you shout the name jesus at the count of three that name that has been so exalted above every other name 
and the Bible says that at that name every knee will bow of things in heaven earth and under the earth and that every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord even to the glory of the Father I want to pray I'm going to be ministering the power of God to bring captivity to an end now and all those listen all those who are under the anointing under this decree please i want you to bring them out as i pray there are two people right now who will shout under the anointing one inside one outside this is what god is telling me the moment that happened i'm ready to pray for them bring them out that's not the shout the shout is coming there is a loud shout inside now the power of god is going to come on someone and why god does these things i honestly do not know these are just signs and wonders manifestations of his spirit there is a loud shout when that shout comes you will know that is a shout the bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous and god does these things as prophetic acts hallelujah praise the name of the lord so once that shout comes please bring them out then i begin to pray are you ready to pray now Jesus at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus and as you shout that name I'm seeing chains I'm even hearing the sounds of chains chains that have been tying men it's time for you to be free now father I come by this apostolic and prophetic mandate and in the name of Jesus over Takuradi I decree and declare that every gate and every ancient door that has tied down lives, tied down ministries, I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and I decree and declare in the name of him who died and rose again that at this shout, let every chain that has bound you give way now. Are you ready at the count of three? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be loose now. Be loose now. Now, bring them out in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare every covenant, yokes of ancestry, manifestations of darkness. In the name of Jesus, the Lord rebuke you. 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 The Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord rebuke you. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is showing me a vision. I'm seeing the feet of people tied with chains. And the Lord is saying I should lose it. I don't know where that person is. In the name of Jesus, let that fire rest on you now. I lose that chain. I apakatosh katebata. I lose that chain right now. Every ancient chain that has tied you down, tied your ministry down, be loose now. Be loose now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, 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 ah. ocean this your river i'm seeing something in the middle opening up and i'm seeing something come out like a sea creature and the lord is saying to destroy leviathan in the name of jesus i stand by the apostolic and the prophetic that every spirit over this climate lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted over takoradi 
in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with all the men of God here and we make proclamations. Every spirit that has tied destinies down, covenants with the waters, covenants with the earth, let Dagon fall before the ark. Let Dagon fall before the ark. Capra take a belletos cotosh, embra caparesca fatesca tabeda. Let Dagon fall before the ark. Let Dagon fall before the ark. Let Dagon fall before the ark in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, hear me. Hallelujah. Please hear me. The Lord is saying I should pray. When the front is full, you just hold the people. There may not be any more space to bring them out. But in the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying I should pray for men. There is a spirit that has held the hands of men so that they don't seem to rise. He said, Son of man, what seest thou? And he said, I saw four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, against Israel, so that no man could lift up his head. He said, But I have sent four carpenters. I come as a privileged carpenter tonight. Every horn that has tied any man here, those chains be broken now. 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 Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to rebuke a spirit that does not allow ministry to rise. Hela shalika shobarita siata grante baraka toshkavras kabeleke baritas. Jesus said, "And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I don't know which man of God is sincere but has struggled because it looks like these horns want to keep you down." In the name of Jesus, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, every ceiling over your ministry, every ceiling that is frustrating you, I decree and declare. I push you to the next level of your prophetic assignment. I push you by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Are you ministers of the gospel? I saw fire coming on you. I stretched my hands. Let that grace rest on you now. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take that grace now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Power within your spirit to excel, to rise, to thrive. Everything tying you down, be loose from it now. Hallelujah. Please listen. In Judges chapter 6, when the angel of the Lord came and met a young boy called Gideon, he told him, he said, thou mighty man of fellow and Gideon said no I am the least in my father's house ay, 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 ay. and he said my father's family is the least I said that to describe somebody in this meeting that you may think you are the least but fire is coming from heaven oh Gideon where are you arise I call you by the voice of prophecy Gideon arise arise to be empowered arise like a warrior that you are i release that mantle over you gideon arise gideon arise gideon arise blow the shofar blow the shofar let the army arise that will defeat the midianites in the name of jesus christ But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my hand. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of 
my head My glory the lift her up of my head Is my glory the lift her up of my head Is my glory the lift her up of my head Hela shala gabaraga da barake segete bosh Rada balaka fraska da belege beriata sobraska nigadesh shavrasaka da beleke tapra da gabarakush kapra degebelesh. Now hear me. The Lord is saying I should prophesy to you that there are going to be seven prophetic worshippers. Please hear me. There are many worshippers, I presume, in Ghana and Takoradi, but there are seven prophetic worshippers that God is going to raise from this nation seven prophetic worshipers not just musicians men who understand the art of worship after the order of david worship is a ladder in the spirit seven prophetic worshipers there is a grace that is mantling men and women who have been called into the ministry of psalmistry i know that some of you are here you are called into the ministry of psalmistry i want to translate you today from being a musician to being a worshiper there is a difference let that grace rest on you now take that fire oh you will write the songs of miriam miriam said i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea receive the grace to write songs songs of revival songs of power word compliant songs in the name of jesus christ I sense in my spirit to release a grace upon end time kingdom financiers. There are men and women. Ah, after the order of Joseph of Rima there are men and women here. The grace that will come on you, you will handle resources for the kingdom. I decree and declare where are they these end time financial apostles over Ghana take that grace take that grace the grace to do business in deep waters I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus the Prince of Tyre and Sidon will not be able to stop you you will prosper even as your soul prospers financial apostles mighty grace is coming upon you mighty grace is coming upon you ordinary men will arise within a short time commanding resources for the kingdom hallelujah let me pray for those in front here and release them in the name of Jesus every spirit that has manipulated anyone here I speak as one sent. Release them now. Release them now. Your yoke over them by the blood of the eternal covenant. It speaks against you. Therefore, pack your load and live your life now. 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 In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Therefore, I declare your liberty in Christ. You are free indeed and free forever. In the name of Jesus. As many who can go back to their seats, you can gently carry them. Those who are under the anointing, just leave them. But as many who are strong to return back to their seats, please let them return. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a man that is great but something has covered your glory nobody is able to see what you stand for you are a man of God you are sincere doing ministry with integrity 
but why you cannot rise to global visibility you do not know and the lord is saying to lose that veil i decree and declare over the ministers of the gospel whose glories have been covered i stand here as a privileged servant of god let your glory be unveiled now be unveiled now in the name of jesus that right from where you are let the nations place a demand upon you in the name of jesus christ there is a hear ye him anointing it is a grace for visibility being gifted is not enough when that grace is not upon you you can be joseph you will still be in the prison may that grace that hear ye him anointing is not only for men of god it can give businesses visibility it can give every other thing visibility may that grace rest upon you now hallelujah please don't be distracted i want you to pay attention god is doing something in your spirit there is someone god is showing me you are going to start a prophetic prayer meeting this is what i'm saying god has been training you but there is a mantle mighty mantle that is coming upon you you will steer the hearts of men to pray and you will see results in prayer i don't know who that person is but from heaven may that grace rest now may that grace rest now i impart upon you that grace steer an army for jesus steer an army for jesus men of prayer and character and consecration and fire in the name of jesus christ hallelujah before i pray for the sick the lord is asking me to release one grace that many people need is called the finisher's anointing my bible says the hand of zerubbabel that began this work there are many people who start things that they do not finish they start businesses and a spirit comes to sit upon their progress they get a job and they do not rise to the zenith of their career there is the finisher's anointing i decree and declare if it is true that god is alpha over your life then i declare may he be the omega you will not start and end in shame receive the finisher's anointing in business receive the finisher's anointing students receive the finisher's anointing in the name of jesus christ now hear me please ladies and gentlemen please listen to me listen to me i want to pray for the sick do you know why the healing ministry is powerful and it is needed i'm saying this because i'm not only going to pray for the sick somebody here must carry a genuine healing anointing no lies no stage management no crooks no 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 nonsense and wasting no 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 genuine potent grace many years ago i traveled to a renhard bonke crusade i was already a man of god but i desired the healing grace genuinely i didn't want to deceive god's people playing games with their intelligence there was a crowd of people tens of thousands of people and that first night i stood there and the man came of blessed memory simple message and he preached i saw mighty wonders of god's power by the second day i came early i said i do not just want to be a spectator i want to serve that anointing and so when i came they were willing people and i said please let me help they said no i was not trained in the committee i said committee or not you don't know where i'm coming from i came with hunger in my spirit while i was willing the people to the front i said lord this is how it will also happen in my meetings because the bible says without all contradiction the less is blessed of the greater can i tell you when your oil finishes 
the bible says go to them that sell and buy there are men that have been given they are custodians of this grace paul says we are stewards of the mystery go to them that sell and buy buy with hunger buy with humility buy with meekness by the second day my hunger and desperation had gotten to the heavens and when he preached a simple message he was about to drink a cup of water and then minister to the sick when my eyes were opened and i saw this giant bird hovering around the entire crusade ground i thought others were seeing it but i was the only one who was seeing it it was not flying it was soaring and the spirit of god took me to genesis 1 verse 2 and the spirit of god hovered around the face of the waters and the lord told me the union of the movement of the spirit and the spoken word is what produces the miraculous by the time i came back to myself i had backed the stage and that began the beginning of a dimension of signs and wonders i'm saying that because i want to pray for the sick because of our time, I'm not sure we may have the time. It is, it's always sad that we don't have the time to testify. But at least let me pray for you. We still have other sessions and you can testify. I need to pray for you. Two things. To pray for the sick. But then to also release that grace. Let me tell you something. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you are learning by now. That the days of superstar Christianity is over. God is not, it's not about one man outshining men. It's about men who have been privileged to touch the grace of God. Freely giving that grace to as many who desire. So that the body of Christ be empowered. When one candle lights another, it does not reduce the light on the first one. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. Jesus, we believe. Jesus, there is healing in your name. There is healing in your name. The saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Ale Shabakosi. The saints and the angels bow. Help him. The redeemed worship now holy 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 are you lord hallelujah i want you to place your hand everywhere you are trusting god for a miracle go ahead by faith the power of god is moving here to heal do you know why healing is important everybody please look up let me teach you something for one minute before i pray for you do you know why healing is very important I will tell you healing is important because everybody is only given one body per lifetime you are only entitled to one body per lifetime and based on the law of territory your longevity what you call life what you call longevity only depends on the health of your body there is a health requirement for your spirit to remain in your body and when your body is so deteriorated beyond a certain threshold your spirit will be mandated by design to leave that body whether your time on earth is there or not so every time satan afflicts you it is death in a measure the goal of sickness is to deteriorate the various parts of your body hopefully that it will keep graduating until you get to a point where the health requirement needed for your longevity it can come as high blood pressure 
it can come as diseases it can come as nameless satanic sicknesses that cannot be diagnosed medically here's what the bible says acts 10 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power he went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil the bible says for god was with him in matthew chapter 10 i believe from verse 8 the bible says as ye go preach say in verse 7 the kingdom of heaven is within your reach it is at hand prove the validity of that kingdom verse 8 by healing the sick verse 8 now cleansing the lepers raising the dead and casting out devils he says freely you have received freely give so when we pray for the sick is more than showing that a man of God is anointed it is God speaking to you that he desires you to live long and strong I've been a victim of sickness I know what it means to be oppressed if you have not been sick you will not know the value of healing everything in your life is forced to mark time your business and everything ask a dying man his greatest desire is not more money Hezekiah was told by a prophet that he was about to die. Can I tell you, when you feel pain here and you say no problem, you have given Satan license to multiply it. You see, in the early church, in Acts chapter 12, the Bible says that certain, the Jews were vexed and that Herod set himself to vex certain Jews. And the Bible says that James was caught and beheaded and the church kept quiet. And the Bible says when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to catch Peter. So every time Satan launches an attack and you keep quiet and justify it, he proceeds further. Proceeds further. I've been oppressed by sickness. I know what it means. Preachers, there is an attack on men of God to see that because there are many people connected to you, the devil will just want to sweep you away. There are men Satan does not want to backslide. He wants them to die. Because once they are out of the scene, it will be a big loss for the body of Christ. Oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? Keep your hands there now. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you we lift our voice in praise. You're the Lamb upon the throne. I want to rebuke sickness now and I want you to believe with all your heart if it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest and by the way you can stand for someone who is not here the centurion stood for his son and said I am a man under authority having men under me I say to one go and he goes come and he comes he says speak the word only I want to pray agree with me as you shout a loud amen when I begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help them. Every spirit of infirmity. You don't have to bring them out. In the name that is above all names. I declare. Leave God's people now. Leave God's people now. Now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed right now. Be healed right now from the crown of your head to the soles of your, your feet. Let that healing fire flow through your body right now. Let that healing fire cleanse your blood right now, your organs right now. In the name of Jesus, I command eye conditions. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Every deaf ear here, partially or totally deaf, be open now. 
everyone here with difficulty in walking bone problems life to your limbs right now in the name of Jesus Christ anyone who is not able to move any part of your body I command begin to move it now there's someone you have severe pain at the right side of your neck the Lord is revealing it to me I command healing right now healing right now every blood situation here any medical condition here represented that is blood related I don't care how long it has been let your blood apparatus yatter I'm sensing fire leaving my hands in the name of Jesus your blood be cleansed now your blood be cleansed now somebody from the back the right side the hand of God is resting upon you your blood is being cleansed right now in the name of Jesus Christ any growth in your body any part of your body satanic lump around your bodies in the name of Jesus let those growths die and dissolve out of your body shout a believing amen I'm seeing a vision and I'm seeing someone's father having kidney issues you're having the issue of kidney in the name of Jesus we pray for Baba wherever he is whether he's in a hospital he's overseas by the power that raised Christ from the dead let healing rest upon our father right now hallelujah The Lord is saying I should rebuke the spirit of death. Why am I seeing people gather like an obituary and that a few weeks after now, someone just left like that in the name of Jesus. I don't know which family that is, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, help them please. Death, you are a spirit and I speak to you. Let God's people go now. That you help them, my God, help them that plague of death I command release God's people now that the fullness of their days they fulfill in the name of Jesus Christ anyone here called barren you've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb for no matter how long I want to pray for you right where you are place your hand on your stomach as a sign of faith right now in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you as Elisha spoke to the woman in Shunem according to the time of life return with your miracle children in the name of Jesus Christ there's someone the Lord is showing me just right here severe pain around your back in the name of Jesus Christ that lumbar area the power of God is touching you right now the power of God is touching you right now the power of God is touching you right now now there's someone I'm seeing you are not sick but you cannot sleep I prayed for a similar issue in the meeting before I came here once you wake up in the night that is the end of it no matter what you do it's an attack please hear me it's not just a medical condition the Lord is saying to declare your liberty for the Bible says I lay me down and I slept I wait for the Lord sustain me that he giveth his beloved sleep everyone here who has been frustrated that when you should sleep the devil keeps you awake to frustrate you in the name of Jesus be free from that plague now I've seen this case that God showed me before that you are a woman you are not nursing a child but you are lactating I don't know what the medical condition is so a woman is producing breast milk but she's not with a child this is what the Lord is showing me there's someone with that situation in the name of Jesus I decree and declare right now let that oppression over your body come to an end now in the name of Jesus 
in the name of Jesus the Lord is telling me rebuke prostrate prostrate there's someone that thing is at his infancy is now beginning to affect you you go to ease yourself you are a man and you find out there is difficulty and you've been quiet you've not shared it with many people it is the devil programming prostrate cancer in the name of Jesus I don't know where that person is whether you are inside or outside I declare cancer of any sort any sort whether prostate cancer breast cancer lung cancer brain tumors in Jesus name for you or for your loved ones overseas be healed now be healed now I'm seeing someone who treats malaria every month regardless what happens you treat it and a new month comes you start feeling cold and then you treat it again you've done this thing for over four months back to back the Lord is saying I should minister to you in the name of Jesus that plague leaves you once and for all help that plague leaves you once and for all it leaves you once and for all once and for all there is someone you have a father the man I don't know the medical people who help us he forgets things he's losing his memory this is what I'm seeing dementia is called and the Lord is asking me to pray because he's now beginning to forget people they have to tap him and remind him and say this is this it's a brain problem a coordination problem he's having and the Lord is saying we should pray for him in the name of Jesus for him and any other person suffering from dementia by the power that raised Christ from the dead let there be restoration of your memory in the name of Jesus Christ now any medical situation at all whether I mentioned it directly or not provided it is not of God and it is inconsistent with the will of God I decree and declare unto you in partnership with all the graces here represented be healed now I hope you know that humans are not the only species of God's creation that can be healed in the Bible waters were healed plants were healed everything God created that has life also needs healing are we together a territory can be healed is it not in your Bible I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and heal their land not just their body a land can be wounded the same thing that happens to a human being can happen to a land you know when a land is, is wounded because it exhibits the symptoms of a sick person. No productivity. When a person is sick, the first thing that happens is the bankruptcy of vitality and strength. A land can be barren. Bankrupt of vitality and strength. That the GDP of a territory can crash down as a testament that the land is sick. At that point, it will need the balm in Gilead trees can be sick I hear oil has been discovered in your area now that is good news but I want to pray that you will be blessed by it because there is a spirit that makes the blessing of a territory to only benefit strangers and that the people within the territory never eat of it the Bible says the increase of the field is for all that even the king is fed by that which comes from the field so everything that comes from the field is for all hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I want you to be very sensitive over what I want to speak in your life now every door that has been closed over your life your ministry your destiny your family look at me please a door is an authorized system of access you your house has a number of rooms am i right on that and those rooms are demarcated with walls and doors am i right and then there is a master door without which you cannot access your house 
is a spiritual strategy that architecture borrowed because you see connecting your kitchen and your living room is a door you can be in the house yet you are incapacitated because the door that leads from the living room to the kitchen is not there if you are hungry you don't need your living room you need your kitchen but if you do not the door is not open you can be limited closed doors mean limitations limitations in progress and according to scripture there are three ways we open doors number one through the use of correct keys when you use a correct key a door is open number two by knocking but when you knock it depends on the willingness of the other person the third way to open doors permanently is the use of force the bible says at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang and the jailers heard them suddenly there was an earthquake it rattled the foundation of the prison and the bible says and all doors open not some all doors financial doors you see that now career doors open we're about to pray every door in whatever form and fashion please receive this one I decree and declare over every closed door a fata be open be open business doors be open ministerial doors be open marital doors be open career doors be open even doors for the advancement of the gospel be open in the name of Jesus Christ Number two, I want to pray. Paul said, I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Favor desire to come to you, but Satan hindered it. Breakthrough desire to come to you, but Satan hindered it. Everything that has been hindered from reaching you, I stand as a prophetic midwife. I push it into your hands. I push it into your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, have you heard this proverb that in one day a nation is born? But he said, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. I don't know how long you have stayed without birthing that which is locked up in your spirit. But I have come as a midwife. Listen, listen. So you shout amen with understanding. There is a man in the Bible who was a victim of the carelessness of a midwife called Mephibosheth. He was not an evil baby. The midwife that handled his delivery was not competent enough and the man became crippled forever. It matters who help you delivering what is coming out. The carelessness of a midwife can produce a Mephibosheth. Even though he was favored by David, but he remained crippled forever. I come as a prophetic midwife. That which is long overdue in your spirit, the giftings, the visions, the dreams, the ideas, in the name of Jesus, deliver safely now. Deliver safely now. The Bible says, and there was war in heaven. A woman who was pregnant with child, a man child, about to deliver and there was a dragon that stood before her waiting to eat the child. But the elements of creation cooperated with that woman and took her to a safe place. I speak to the wind. I speak to every element that God created. May they partner with the Holy Ghost in your safe delivery. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is it not in your Bible that the stars fought for Deborah? Is it not in your Bible that hailstones came from heaven on account of God's people? Is it not in your Bible that the sun stood still for Joshua? Everything God created can serve his bidding. Hallelujah. The Bible says, because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness, Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. Let me pray for you. Listen, 
I want to release a grace called honor. Do you know what honor is? Honor means to be perceived to match your true worth and to be rewarded to match that level. It is possible that you can be perceived less than your sacrifice. There are people today who have masters and PhD, but the jobs they are given is far below their sacrifice. Honor is the ability, is a grace that comes on you and compels men to see you to match your true worth and even to reward you as touching it. It says, thou shalt take Joshua, the son of Nun, in whom is the spirit, and thou shalt lay your hands upon him, he says, and then thou shalt take some of your honor and place upon him. If honor is not upon your life, even if you have integrity, men will not listen to you. It takes honor to command the loyalty of a generation. Are you ready to receive? By this impartation, shame and reproach, that which has made mockery of your destiny, that has made men to call you Ichabod, that the glory has departed in the name of Jesus let this grace for honor rest upon you now let this grace for honor rest upon you now where you have been forgotten let honor cause remembrance for you hallelujah there was a man in the Bible called Mordecai in the book of Esther the Bible lets us know that one time some gentlemen conspired to kill Ahasuerus. But he got hold of that information and he transmitted that information to the king. They were apprehended and brought to justice. And it was written, but the man was not rewarded. He remained at the gate, even though the, the kingdom simply remained because of him. There would not even be the issue of enthroning Esther unless that the king were alive. And yet that man was not rewarded. There are many of you who are the brains behind many great visions. But nobody knows you and nobody will hear you. There are tech companies that are thriving out of the creativity of brilliant Africans. And yet they are not heard. There are businesses running in Ghana. There are some of you who it is through your creativity, your innovation, your power, your stamina. Are we together now? The dexterity of your intellectual acumen that many businesses, many academic institutions stand and yet you have been ignored. There was such a man in the Bible. His name, Mordecai. But the Bible says, and that night could not Ahasuerus sleep. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And they opened and he found where her man, I mean Mordecai, had saved his life. And he said, who is in the inner chamber there? And they brought her man. He said, what should be done to such and such a man? Her man thinking it was him. He brought the best description. And he said, do so to Mordecai. And let not one word fail. I want to open the book of remembrance over someone. It is true that God, the Bible says, bring me. He says, concerning my work, command ye me. The idea is bring to remembrance and compel me by my word to come through for you in that area. I want to decree and declare over someone who has been forgotten. There are people today you knew them before and after, yet they will pass you with no sense of regard to reward you. I have met many of such people in my life. They will show me photos with now presidents, photos with now global CEOs. And at the point of infancy, they cried with them. They stood with them. Do you not know that the wine pressers forgetting Joseph added two years to his captivity? Joseph pleaded with him and said, when you go to the king, please advocate my innocence. And the man went to the palace and forgot him. Men can forget. But in the name of Jesus, whoever has forgotten you, whether forgotten your promotion, whether forgotten the contract, whether forgotten to lift you, in the name of Jesus, here at this conference, I decree and declare, let the book of remembrance be opened now. Do you believe that? You will marvel and wonder. I'm not motivating you. I'm imparting something on your life you did not come to church with. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now hear me. 
I'm going to pray for everybody now, but this prayer is particularly, respectfully speaking, to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, especially across here. Do you know that there is a spirit that makes men to only receive from afar? They never come to be planted in the house of God. Every city has enough people to fill up every church without competition, prejudice, or jealousy. There are more than enough people in any territory to fill up the church and have God's people being served with the truth. But there are spirits that hinder men. When the feast was ready, he said, go and call people and one was given an excuse. I just married, I need to have time with my wife. Another person said, I just built a house. And he said, go to the highway and the byway and compel them to come. Is the Greek word anakazo. There is an energy of the spirit that can compel men from where they are the same grace that came upon the ark of noah he did not need to talk to the animals one by one two by two seven by seven they came until the ark was filled i want to release that grace truly there is a grace for in gathering that calls men it is important that the local assemblies here represented have sufficient people that call upon the name of the Lord. Therefore, I stand with every man of God who has labored in this city, labored in this region for the kingdom. May this place rest upon you, rest upon your church, rest upon your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. grace that compels the attention of a city the bible says it was noised abroad that jesus was in town who noised it we do not know but there are angels that herald glad tidings and compel men to come and see what is happening John Knox said, you set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn. In fact, scripture says it this way, that where the carcasses are, there the eagles gather. Hallelujah. Is it alright if I speak about your finances? Please, don't accept poverty. It's a satanic thing that is plaguing Africa. Listen to me now. When it has to do with the subject of wealth and abundance, there is a negative side to it that must be corrected. Materialism and such an unguarded loss for money. So for most people who talk about money, it's not from the standpoint of revelation and a desire for comfort and the advancement of the kingdom. It's just an obsession. It's a channel to market and sell lust. It is the reason why when people receive these graces, it, it leads to all kinds of things that you do not imagine. But nobody should ever preach you into accepting poverty. It does danger and harm to the dignity of your own life the purposes of God and even the dignity of a nation. Are we together? The Bible gave a parable, a story in the book of Ecclesiastes that there was a poor wise man. It says that man by his wisdom, when certain cities came to attack a nation, by his wisdom, he offered a strategic security solution and the city was saved. But he said that poor man was not remembered. And he says, here is the conclusion. Wisdom is better than strength, but a poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. No man remembered the same poor man. From infancy, I made up my mind, infancy of ministry, that I will never advocate poverty. I will balance and teach people character, consecration, doctrine, and the purpose of wealth. But not under my watch will I raise a poor people. I will not ask wealthy people to come. I will raise people from within. You see, hallelujah. And the scripture I found is Genesis 17 and verse 6. Please give it to us, and then I speak over your life. Don't be tired of receiving, it's a good bargain. You are standing for a few hours and reprogramming the next decade of your life. And I will make the exceeding fruitful, he said to Isaac and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee you are a businessman here don't feel guilty for being rich just love jesus with all your heart 
materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of material possessions on your character your relationship with jesus and your kingdom disposition a poor man can be materialistic it's just that you don't have the materials yet to show it hallelujah so take all that 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 advocacy of poverty out of your life in a hurry and trust god to grow wealthy with the dignity of kingdom integrity there are certain temptations that will not near your corridor when you are blessed do you not know that wealth is a is a defense delilah gave samson simply because of money judas who loved jesus so much the money he did not even use it and he still died hallelujah africa has become a victim of our own theology we need to be careful the rich rule it over the poor and the borrower is always slave to the lender there are many people who have written books today that can change nations but they are limited financially there are many sincere ministries right now in debt the men cannot pray their wives cannot have peace their children cannot be sent to school there are many who are now within the corridors of compromise all because of the god of gold i made up my mind that i will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant in order of priority your spiritual vibrancy is of utmost importance but in addition to it you need to be empowered it is evil to advocate a gospel of poverty and mediocrity you will keep a generation perpetually in slavery transgenerational in fact the balance there is everything cannot be about money no money 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 from morning till night that is an inaccurate approach are we together now money like many other important facets of the kingdom are important for the holistic excelling of the believer what we need to do is balance so there are people who are really obsessed about money the entire circumference of their christian experience is money there's need to repent and readjust your understanding finances is important but not at the expense of your work with god what shall it profit a man the bible declares if a man gains the whole world and loses his soul are we together now yes so we are not talking about materialism and the mundane quest for things as against your relationship that makes you to lose your sense of sanity and the dignity of kingdom integrity but men can be blessed the bible says look unto abraham isaiah 51 from verse 1 and 2 your father for i called him alone and i blessed him and i increased him on the study abraham he is god's portrait of a blessed man psalm 112 says blessed is the man that feared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed shall be mighty upon earth that the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and yet his righteousness endures forever it took resources to make this happen uh, you've heard me say the name of jesus is very heavy it takes resources to lift it high for the nations to see The authorized pathway to becoming wealthy is an interplay of many kingdom and economic forces. Do not ignore them. The force of value and productivity, the force of relationships, are we together? Strategic connection, competence, investments, all of these are biblically proven pathways that lead to sustainable wealth and do not ignore them. But in addition, I introduce to you tonight the prophetic dimension of wealth. There is the prophetic dimension of wealth. The Bible says, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. He says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established, and believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. By this time tomorrow, it's not an economic statement, it's a prophetic statement. I hope you believe in the prophetic dimension of and those of us who are business inclined let's be careful so that we do not mock the prophetic no people can be wealthy prophetically 
there's no time I would have shown you from John 21 Peter was a professional fisherman he was valuable he was at the right place the sea he had the right tools the boat and the net he could catch he had experience yet he did not catch fish there are times everything is in place but you will still not have the catch at that point you don't need business ideas at that time you need Jesus that you even when Jesus speaks you will still need the boat and the net and the sea but not without his voice the assignment of the prophetic is not to replace all that you have learned in school and your understanding is to complement with understanding no matter how well you mix your ingredients when there is no fire there is no cooking you can mix the ingredients well and yet you don't have your food cooked do you buy fire in the market talk to me but fire without a pot and the ingredients is there a meal it is the combination of the meal properly put as at as at mandated by the chef then when all is said and done that fire under you don't go to the market and say i want to buy fire no so many of us you have your pot with the correct ingredients but you have been stirring it for hours and yet it will not cook because you have ignored something you cannot buy in the market God sent us to introduce that missing factor in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit the prophetic advantage over your finances let it rest on you now men you do not know between now and the next three months I decree and declare may they arise find you and bless you may they arise find you and bless you may they arise find you and bless you can i tell you the truth i will not lie to you one of the provokers of the prophetic when it has to do with wealth is sacrifice it has been abused though but ladies and gentlemen within the boundary of doctrine and scripture it is a potent spiritual manifestation i'm not asking you to come and me i'm just telling you that when it has to do with the prophetic dimension of wealth it is beyond just saying amen when it was time for jacob isaac to speak over his sons he had cattle and he was a wealthy man but he called his son he said go to the field make me venison such as my soul loves that i may eat and bless you that i may die I hope you know that the, the animal that Jacob stole was just behind his house. Why did he now send him to the field? He wanted to eat of the product of his creativity and value. Solomon offered a thousand bond offerings, the Bible says, and that night God came to him. He received an impartation of an understanding heart. Let me speak to you. I know that there are people who respectfully speaking and sadly may have manipulated people into giving for just mundane things. I, God is helping his church and this is why we keep teaching the truth in love so that as many who are given to compromise will find the truth and come to know that there is a pathway to do ministry with dignity and with character and with integrity. However. Do not throw the baby and the bath water. Every man of God here will tell you we are rose upon the wings of sacrifice. I can tell you stories upon stories that people gave and gave everything. And God elevated them to dimensions and vowed a vow. Did Abraham not carry Isaac? Take now thy son, thine only son whom thou lovest. I'm speaking to you because some of you it's possible God can give you certain instructions or perhaps the church can come for you with prophetic instructions do not see it as manipulation if you understand it with revelation manipulation is where you act against your will and against the dictates of scripture that is manipulation but within the boundary of knowledge understanding and accuracy of scripture please practice every truth you find with scripture and expect that there be an open door let me speak again to your finances everyone in debt everyone in financial shame and reproach we call upon God who is called Ebenezer the one who helps men in the name of Jesus 
come out of every financial shame and reproach come out of every financial shame and reproach i speak to families be empowered financially ministries be empowered financially institutions be empowered financially pastors be empowered financially in the name of jesus christ hallelujah finally i want to release a grace upon your life called favor favor is beyond money if all you have is money you are only valuable you are not favored no favor goes past the realm of naira and cobble and cities and rands and dollars and pounds and whatever it is it goes beyond there the true proof of favor is access to the hearts of men when god gives you the heart of men that there are men today when you are favored you will clap your finger and they will come with their abundance and see it as a privilege to support you there are things money cannot do all. it's an uncomfortable truth but let's know this for a, for a certain there are things money cannot do I want to pray favor upon your life we need favor is the number one reason men succeed the number one reason men succeed father you have shown us mercy and you have granted us favor upon the strength of this grace in the name of Jesus let every life here that is without help without the ministry of men without support by this impartation of favor may God change your story now therefore I decree and declare receive favor now favor in the morning favor in the afternoon favor in the night favor in the city favor in the country favor in ghana favor in u.s favor in europe favor all across africa let it rest upon you you will fall into the hands of good people they will treat you with kindness unusual access unusual acceptance unusual kindness in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now let me wrap up by speaking over this church and its membership we have spoken over everybody but the bible says the husband man shall be the first partaker there are men and women who have labored given sown seeds of their time energy effort rehearsing our precious people in the worship team the media people the Bible says whatsoever a man soweth it says he will reap is that true I de declare I stand in faith with the angel over this house and this commission and I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic let a thousand cubits be measured for this church step into deeper levels of impact in the name of Jesus let mighty men be raised from this church let mighty voices come out of this church i say to you prophetically in the name of jesus no weakness no limitations no delay no retrogression may this church become a cutting apostolic and prophetic voice as far as god's program is concerned you will not be without relevance your bishopric will not be taken by another in the name of jesus christ my final call tonight you need Jesus you need Jesus you have heard me speak about Jesus and his life and his power there are people here who are saying apostle perhaps many who were invited listen to me ladies and gentlemen I told you yesterday and even this morning that Jesus Christ is the foundation he called himself the door when you enter a house through a fence you are in the house but you are not welcome because you used an unauthorized access so Jesus says I am the door all that I have proposed to you all through my session in this conference only happens when you have the privilege of being in the kingdom and that only happens when you believe in the son 
believing God. Believing in a man of God does not translate to salvation. Not even a church. The Bible says, whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have life everlasting. I want to make an altar call. Two calls in one. Those who are saying, Apostle, if you give me a chance on this, your final night, I want to make it right with Jesus here at this conference. And those who are saying, I need to rededicate my life to Jesus. There's no point flattering you. You know this for a shorty that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, uh, there are many people, I presume, who will be coming from outside. I want to count one to five. By the time I count five, you should be in front here. And if the front is filled up wherever else you can stand, give me an opportunity to lead you to this Jesus who has changed our lives. Jesus, the King of all the ages, the one who is Savior, Lord, and Christ. I begin my counting now. Let's celebrate them as they come. One. Takoradi celebrate salvation. Come. Come. Two. If you're running, come to Jesus. Come. 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 No shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. No wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't give down. Coming after me. No shadow you won't light up. Come to Jesus. No one you will keep down. Lie you will down. Come to me. Listen. It matters that we lead people to Jesus. There are no assumptions. The rich young ruler comes to Jesus and says, Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? It is important, ladies and gentlemen, that we ensure that the people around our environments are not only blessed and prosperous but that ultimately in fact first and foremost that they are saved i shared with us yesterday that god desires that all men be saved and then that they come into the knowledge of the truth thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for making this noble decision this is unto jesus let me request that you lift your right hand and all those who are outside across the overflows who are praying this prayer make sure you do that with devotion dedication and seriousness and for someone who is watching by way of television watching online you are in your home your office uh, or just watching by way of internet here's your chance to make jesus lord of your life all of you in front say this after me as loud and as clear as you can say lord jesus i have heard your word i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive you into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i go for whatever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted and i pray for you father thank you for bringing these ones the bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away they have come declaring the lordship of jesus over their lives according to the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and in the name of Jesus, I speak unto you the power to live a victorious Christian life. I release it upon you now. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I empower you that from today, you go forward ever and backward never. The blood speaks on your behalf. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Thank you very much. Please look at me. Congratulations to all of you. Let me request as we did yesterday. There's a counselor and official waving his hands at my right. That will be your left. Please let me request that all of you in concert just move to um, that direction. And you will have a few people have a word with you very quickly. And you'll be back to your seat. Let's give them a big, big hand clap. Hallelujah.
the conference still continues let me encourage everyone as much as possible participate even on to the final day of the conference and this is my encouragement for everyone the Lord is still moving still blessing there are many other dimensions coming by the Spirit of the Living God so insist and ensure that your heart remains open are we together now to get the balance of everything that God has in store for you but one last time Ghana Takoradi thank you for your love thank you so much Bishop may the Lord bless and honor you in the name of Jesus Christ Amen and amen.